Today I am going to be checking out the 2015 Toyota Prius Hybrid lineup at the 2015 Chicago Auto Show. I will be doing a walk around, going over some specs, and giving my personal thoughts about the entire lineup. For starters, the regular Prius currently has five different trim levels, two, three, persona, four, and five. Obviously each level upwards gives you more features. As you can see, the Prius has an available solar roof package that is only available on the Prius 3. This gives you a power tilt and sliding sunroof as well as the solar powered ventilation system which when activated you will turn off, exit, lock the Prius and the solar panel behind the sunroof will power an electric fan to bring the interior to an ambient temperature. For the Prius 4 trim level, it is called a deluxe solar roof package, which gives you that same sunroof and solar powered ventilation system, along with a couple of navigation, audio, and heads up display goodies. This is a $1,500 option for the Prius 2 and almost a $4,000 option for the Prius 4. The solar ventilation system does not charge up the battery pack. This feature is not available on the Prius V or Prius C. In addition to the solar ventilation system, the Prius has a remote AC system activated via remote key fob which will cool the interior to a preset temperature right before you get into the vehicle and drive off. It does this only using the battery pack, not the gas engine. Each Prius is propelled by what Toyota calls hybrid synergy drive. Like all hybrids, it combines a gas engine and an electric motor, and depending on the driving scenario, the system will drive the vehicle via the electric motor or a combination of both the gas engine and electric motor. However it is done, it will do it in the most optimum way possible, giving the power that is needed, but doing so in the most efficient way. Of course, every hybrid has some type of battery system to drive the electric motor in addition to the gas engine and regenerative braking will recharge the battery pack slash maintain a certain level of charge. The Prius and Prius V have an aluminum 1.8 liter dual overhead cam 16 valve 4 cylinder engine with what Toyota calls variable valve timing with intelligence. The Prius C's engine is set up the exact same way, the only difference is that it is a 1.5 liter. All Priuses have a permanent magnet AC synchronous electric motor with a sealed nickel metal hydride battery pack as well as an electronically controlled continuously variable transmission. The hybrid system net power in the Prius and Prius V is 134 horsepower while the Prius C is a little less. You likely already know that the Prius is known for great fuel economy ratings alone. The Prius is rated at 51 miles per gallon in the city, 48 on the highway, and 50 combined. The Prius V is rated at 44, 40, and 42 combined, and the Prius C is at 53, 46, and 50 combined. As of this moment in time, and according to Toyota's official website, the Prius MSRP starts at just a hair over $24,000, the Prius V at $26,675, and the Prius C at $19,540. Each Prius has three different driving modes, EV, Eco, and Power Mode. I think you can figure out what each of them do. As you are seeing throughout the video, all of the Priuses are very practical and spacious. Even the rear seats, I was sitting there very comfortably, and I'm 6 foot 1. I also had plenty of headroom, even in the Prius C. As you can see, there's quite a lot of cargo area. I will later show this in the Prius V and the Prius C. There's 21.6 cubic feet of cargo room in the Prius, 34.3 cubic feet in the Prius V, and 17.1 cubic feet in the Prius C. The Prius has an 11.9 gallon fuel tank, the Prius V has that same size fuel tank, and the Prius C has a 9.5 gallon fuel tank. This particular Prius shown here is the Persona trim level mentioned earlier. The Persona trim level gives you everything that the 3 trim level gives you, in addition to 17 inch alloy wheels and a darker finish, black leather trim seats with gray stitching, and a badge on the rear of the vehicle that says Persona. You are not able to get the solar roof package on the Persona trim level like you can on the Prius 3 trim level. The Persona trim level is a $1200 add-on over the Prius 3 trim level. If you like leather trim with darker 17 inch alloy rims and you don't care about not having the solar panel or the sunroof, the price seems reasonable in my opinion. You can only get the Persona trim level in what Toyota calls absolutely red, which is what is shown here, and in blizzard pearl, which is a white color.
The curb weight of the Toyota Prius is 3,042 pounds, while the Prius V sits at 3,340 pounds, and the Prius C at a dead 2,500 pounds. All of the Priuses have many safety features, starting with both the Prius and Prius V have seven airbags while the Prius C has nine. Some other safety features available on certain Priuses are the star safety system, pre-collision system, lane departure alert slash lane keep assist, and vehicle proximity notification. Every Prius has a monitor in the dashboard which can display many different things such as the energy monitor, fuel consumption info slash eco savings record, average fuel economy, and instant miles per gallon, and temperature screen. Let's check out the Prius V while I go over some more info on all of them. Really goes without needing to say, the Prius has all of the standard features like power windows and locks. Most of the models have cruise control. The Prius C1 trim level is the only one that does not. Some trim levels can get you a backup camera as well. The only way every Prius comes is with a front wheel drive drivetrain. Each Prius seats 5 people. Obviously, the volume of room is different between each model, so pick whatever works best for you. You should also know that all of them come equipped with independent McPherson strut front suspension with stabilizer bar and torsion beam rear suspension. They all also have electric power steering, or EPS, which eliminates the power steering fluid. I wanted to offer my opinion on the Toyota Prius. I will be honest with you all, I never cared about this vehicle at all or any other hybrid up until recently. I have driven them and shortly realized that the common stereotypes are what really ruins this car and other hybrids like it. I noticed when you actually step on the accelerator pedal, it has the power you want and need to get up and go. In addition to, it's like any other sedan that is highly versatile, but this one gets 50 miles to the gallon while doing it, for around the same price point as many other sedans. To each his own as far as looks slash appearance goes, I personally like the way it looks. I'm not a fan of the name Prius, or the way Toyota advertises the car in general. But for what the car is by itself, I can absolutely appreciate it. You are driving a sedan like you would any other. This way, with a hybrid, you can still get at least 40 miles to the gallon when you dog run it, such as keeping up with the flow of traffic in the left lane, if you know what I mean. In addition, I can drive this vehicle like I do with my own and still have outstanding fuel economy, like the give or take 40 miles per gallon number I just mentioned. You can basically use the car how you want to, and what I mean by that is, if I want to have air conditioning running full blast or drive faster in the left lane as mentioned, etc, etc, I can do all of that without being completely shafted on my miles per gallon rating. But if you want to hypermile, saving every drop of gas that you possibly can, that's what this car is there for. But I politely ask that you move the hell out of my way and stay in the right lanes, highway or not, so I can drive faster than you. These reasons make it obvious why people choose the Prius or many other hybrid vehicles over one that is not. Most people enjoy putting around $30 to completely fill up their gas tank, and they can drive around 600 miles before having to fill up again. Anyone I know would also like that it will cost a lot less to change oil than most other sedans that are not a hybrid. Even though there is a plug-in hybrid version of most non-plug-in hybrid vehicles like this one here, I wish there was a low voltage charging port that can be used off of a traditional 110 12 volt wall outlet to give the battery pack a small boost in charging as well as maintain the battery pack temperatures versus it not plugged in and going flat and potentially breaking the battery pack. Now, I can't remember any case where that's ever happened, but for me in an OCD standpoint in the automotive industry, better safe than sorry. In addition, maybe combine this low voltage battery pack charging with an engine block heater. Kind of have it plug in and do the same thing at one time. Even though it's a gas engine, that engine block heater feature can really come in handy when it's very cold out. Adding your battery pack range slash effectiveness and gas mileage are affected in said cold temperatures. Here's one way we can make a very efficient vehicle even more efficient. Another way to make the Prius even more efficient, well, any car really, is with all LED lighting. They last a lot longer and they produce not nearly as much energy as one that's not. Why it's not already? 
your guess is as good as mine. Plus, it looks a hell of a lot better than without it, don't it? Check out the remaining few seconds of the Prius V, and then a few pictures afterwards, and then we'll move on to the Prius C. As you have seen so far in this video, I have not gone over the Prius plugin, which is obviously the plugin hybrid version. That will be because it is not available in all 50 states. I have no clue why it is not, but it is completely ridiculous that it isn't. The starting price on the Prius plugin is very reasonable, a little less than $31,000, and there's an available $2,500 incentive. In addition to the 11 or so miles you can get on one charge, if a person is in the market for a hybrid, why wouldn't you want a small amount of pure electric range to drive on? This gives the Prius plug-in a rating of 95 miles per gallon equivalent and that same 50 miles to the gallon in hybrid mode. It is literally a win-win and I do not understand why it is not sold in all 50 states. That would be like a well-known nationwide steakhouse saying that their filet mignon is now only available in certain states and that you should get their microwaved macaroni and cheese instead. I think that Prius plug-in sold only in a few states situation needs to be in check real fast. Anyway, what I like about the Prius is that it is the one that people knew 14 years ago and still know today. I like that Toyota has added two more Prius models to choose from, the Prius V and the Prius C, allowing more options to suit a particular person's needs, as well as giving some people a less expensive but practical option, like the Prius C. Therefore, that makes the regular Prius a perfect middle ground for the pricing and practical standpoints. My favorite would obviously be the Prius due to that middle ground and I think it looks the best. The Prius C is too small for me and I do not need the Prius V. However, the Prius V has an awesome panoramic view moonroof that do have power shades that is not available on the Prius or Prius C. I like that there is an option to have either cloth or leather seats, both made in an eco-conscious way. So whatever works best for you. As I mentioned, I was shocked to see that I had a fairly decent amount of room in the back seat of the Prius C. You will also notice that the gear selector and the parking brake in the Prius C are different from the ones found in the Prius and Prius V. I am absolutely not sold on the instrument cluster being in the middle of the dashboard. I think it should be directly in front of you, like the rest of the vehicles in this world are. Except the Saturn Ion, which nobody likes. Which is exactly my point. Put the instrumentation cluster in front of you in its default location. Going from a Prius to a different car, that center information cluster would make everything bass backwards. Well, I suppose if you can afford the higher trim level, you got the heads up display to look at in front of you. Unfortunately, I was not able to test the audio system in any of the Prius models, but I can only imagine that the upgraded audio system in each Prius model couldn't sound bad. I couldn't help but notice that Priuses hold their value very well. We can only wonder why. Probably because it's a very reliable vehicle, adding on to why many people like it and buy one. Toyota has a few other hybrids as well. The Camry, Avalon, and Highlander all have an available hybrid model over the standard gas models of each of those vehicles. Some of the Prius's competitors include the Ford Fusion Hybrid and Energy, the Ford C-Max Hybrid and Energy, the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, the Honda Accord Hybrid and Plug-in Hybrid, Honda Civic Hybrid, and the Honda Insight Hybrid, and to an extent, the Chevrolet Volt.